What is the scariest or creepiest thing you have seen or heard? Part 6. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel, Thread Tonic. Account 1. I've posted this before a long time ago, but it still remains by far the single creepiest thing that ever happened to me. So here goes. I was in Taiwan one year when I was younger and had traveled to a busy night market. These are popular gatherings of food shop stalls that usually operate in the evening. Nearby, I spotted a sign for a net cafe in a five to six story tall building, thinking I'd fire off some quick emails. I walked in the dark, small entrance of the building. The building was older and hasn't been well maintained, but it's not out of the ordinary in Taiwan. The entrance just had a dark hallway that led to a small elevator. I pressed the elevator call button and entered. The elevator was uncharacteristically new compared to the building, but I didn't think much of it. Like some Chinese Taiwanese buildings, there wasn't a fourth floor. It's considered bad luck since four sounds like death. So it just read one, two, three, five, six, which was usual. I looked for the floor. The net cafe was at sixth floor and pressed the button. It lurched into action quietly and began the ascend. When it stopped, I figured it was my floor. So I instinctively began to step out, right before stepping out. However, the sight outside the elevator stopped me. It was pitch dark, only lit by the light in the elevator. It looked like it hasn't been occupied for decades, with some random pieces of furniture covered with white cloth or similar. It was a small building, so each floor were single occupancy, so I could see pretty much the entire floor from the elevator. Thinking I must have gotten the wrong floor, I checked the light that indicates which floor you're on. Strangely, there was nothing. None of the indicators were on, but the floor button to the net cafe was still lit, so I know I haven't gotten there yet. All this happened within a couple of seconds. That's when I noticed a figure moving in the distance of the floor. It was not very visible, but I could make out what looks like a person dressed in some kind of gown moving slowly towards the elevator where I was. I was thoroughly creeped out, so I started pressing the closed door button. As soon as I pressed it, the elevator light flickered off and I am in pitch dark. I am this close to pissing my pants, and it's actually kind of freaking me out thinking back to it. The lights flickered back on under a second, and the door closed. The elevator jolted back to life. A few moments later, it opened again to the net cafe. I am beyond relieved at this point. I walked out immediately and sat down at a computer. After gathering my wits a bit, I walked over to the cashier's desk and told them what I saw. The girl working there listened, and her face turned a bit ashen, so I asked her if she heard of similar. She told me that she's never experienced it, but some co-workers and occasional customers have brought it up. Basically, the building has six floors, and the fourth floor had a history. Apparently, the floor used to be a hair salon of sorts, until one of the employees killed herself there for some reason. She slit her wrists over the hair wash station and died. The store continued operations despite stories of weird appearances. When customers got their hair rinsed, the water would look a little red like the customer was bleeding little things like that, and a couple people reported seeing someone's figure walking away in the mirror but wouldn't see anyone when they turned to check. Naturally, the business closed down a few months later. The building owner tried to re-rent the place out but never had any luck. Most businesses are quite superstitious and no one wanted to rent the fourth floor after someone had died in it, even at a very cheap price. Finally, after dropping the price to nearly nothing, a stationary supply store wanted to rent. During the renovations of the floor, however, several accidents would happen. Tools would end up in strange places, a mirror from the previous business shattered when no one was near it, and finally a worker had his hand jammed between the elevator doors when it closed on him unexpectedly. The workers refused to continue working, and finally the business left, and the building owner finally gave up and shut down the floor. He then had the elevator company come in to replace the panel so that the elevator could not go to the fourth floor. Let me repeat that. The elevator was programmed to never go to the fourth floor. It doesn't even have a button. But for some reason, sometimes when people take the elevator, it would go to the fourth floor and the doors would open. 
and some like myself would see a figure walking around in the dark. Account 2. My brother and I used to play hide and seek in the dark and took it very seriously. We would close all blinds, cover all lights, microwave, oven, TV, etc. Oh, and had very well set rules. One night it was just my brother, his friend, and me, and we decided to play. As our eyes adjusted to the pitch black slight silhouettes could be made out, but generally, you could be a foot away from someone and not know they were there. So my brother is it, and I'm sitting in the corner of the kitchen hiding. His friend yells, safe, and I hear the two of them talking in the living room. As they're talking, the door to our walk-in pantry starts to slowly open. I can see the silhouette of a large-headed man holding a knife and walking towards me, literally frozen with fear. I just sat there ready to fucking die. When this knife-bearing man got close, my brother came in and flicked on the light. The man pulled off his mask to reveal he was my brother's other friend, who had been hiding outside unbeknownst to me just so they could scare me. At this point, I was crying, and obviously didn't want to play anymore. Not paranormal and creepy, but I've never been more scared in my entire life, cunts. Account 3 I posted this before, but my wife and I just moved into a brand new house this past July. There are definitely creaks and weird noises from the house settling. However, I had a buddy over one night. We all had got a little drunk, and as we were going to bed, my buddy jokingly knocks on our bedroom door and asks if he can sleep in our bed because there is a ghost in his room. Go to bed, Rodney, I say. The next day after he went home, he told me his girlfriend asked him. So you called me last night? He didn't remember calling her, so he checked his phone, and there was no record of any new outgoing calls. He told her that he didn't call her, and she said, That's interesting because I had a missed call last night from you in a voicemail. Listen to this. What came next was the weirdest thing ever. Thing. It was this loud, droning noise with lots of feedback and interference. Her phone would translate any voicemail into text. So while you heard this weird growling sound, the text message read, Help me! Help me! Are you there? Help me, please! Account 4. Heading to my then-boyfriend's house one night, we took this back road as a shortcut. It was dark. I don't remember being able to see the moon at all, and very few other cars were on this road. So all we really had were our headlights as far as sources of light. I was talking to him and turned my head back to look down the road when I saw this old man crossing, wearing a plaid shirt and moving rather quickly. I remember the plaid vividly, and he seemed to really stand out in the dark. Before I had time to react properly, my boyfriend drove through the man. I watched him pass through the hood, the dashboard down the middle of the car, and vanish. It was like time had suddenly slowed down, then caught back up with itself, Boyfriend saw nothing, but I insisted we never take that road again after. Account 5. Guy lights himself on fire, runs through a parking garage, and jumps from the eighth floor or so. Watching him fly through the air and hearing him scream is one of many memories I would love to forget. Hearing him hit the concrete made a sound that is hard to describe, but is probably closest to the sound those kids' jelly toy things make when you throw them on the ground and they flatten out. Any temporary relief I received from his screaming stopping was quickly replaced by confusion as I see what I thought was a grayish-pinkish ball rolling along the ground about ten feet away from his head towards me. Brain pulls a total derp as I think that's an odd-looking basketball wonder what it's doing over here, nowhere near any outdoor courts. Snap back to reality, yup, intact, brain instant, out loud, WTF. The sounds and smell of burning flesh are what is burned most into my soul. I guess not really scary, but these days I don't do heights or get close at all to fire. Account 6. I never seem to have much luck with commenting and the like, but nonetheless, up until I was about eight or so, I lived in a really old house that since the beginning of time had been bounced around from relative to relative until eventually my mother had been handed over the keys. It was basically a shit heap. Two stories, a collapsed balcony on the second-level mold and mildew all over most of the ceilings. One tiny bathroom and the toilet was outside overrun was frogs and spiders, and whatever other kind of hell spawn the Australian outback would throw at us. I was terrified as a child, scared of basically everything. 
I'm much better now and have much bigger balls than most of my friends if I do say so myself. Nonetheless, I would probably have to put the blame on this old house of mine. I remember as a child that I would always have the same dream. I'd start in the kitchen, no idea how I got there, of course. It was during the day, probably later in the afternoon. Nobody was around, so naturally I'd go looking for my mother and father. I'd go to all the normal places. Mum wasn't in the laundry shed or the lounge room. Dad wasn't on the patio outside or up the back at the chicken coop, and my sister wasn't around either. I was starting to get worried, thinking that everyone was gone and they'd left me alone, until I heard a noise above me coming from the second floor where the bedrooms are. Relieved, I darted towards the stairs and jumped on the first step. Then I felt it. There was something in the back of my head making me stop legs still raised up as I prepared to move on to the second step, something telling me that I shouldn't go up there. Of course, this thought was running rampant in my mind. Don't go up there, don't go up there, stay down here, don't go up there, there's something up there. Finally, my leg dropped before I could reconsider. I pushed myself up those stairs, and even though I didn't want to anymore, I couldn't stop myself, only slow down. Each step up was taken at an agonizingly slow pace, and I wanted so bad just to go back downstairs and find someone run to my grandparents' house and stay with them until my mum was home. But eventually, I rounded the corner, leaving only the last few steps leading up to the floor ahead of me. There was nothing there. I couldn't see anything in the stairwell. I started getting hopeful at this point. Maybe it's okay. Nobody's here. I was just imagining things. And it's going to be fine. I'm still taking the slow steps up when it appears. Something's there. I can't actually remember what it was. And I never could after I woke up but it was horrifying beyond belief, and I would always try to close my eyes because that was my thing as a child. If you can't see it, then it can't see you. But I could still see it. I couldn't blink. I couldn't shut my eyes. It was like my eyelids weren't working. I would even try holding my hands in front of my face, but still I couldn't block it out. I could see through my hands, and I couldn't do anything. I was frozen, unable to do anything except stare at this thing all but a meter away from me. Whatever I saw, whatever I did for those eight years, I was at that house, I had to force myself up the stairs. Day or night, it was horrifying. My mother sighed and tried to reason with me. My father growled at me and called me a coward, and my sister just laughed and said I was retarded. But every time I had to go up those stairs, as soon as I hit the top stairwell, I had to stop and make sure that I could cover my eyes with my hands or that I could shut my eyes. Of course, it would terrify me most when I'd go to blink and wave my hand in front of my face and it wouldn't work, and I'd realize I was dreaming. Edit. Oh, wow. Comments and upvotes my word. What a wonderful day. Thought it might be interesting to add that once I moved out of this house, I never had any more of those dreams, though I was terrified of my house in general. I couldn't be alone in it until I was about 15, and every morning before school, I'd basically run out of the house from my room and wouldn't feel safe until I was out the door and on the front lawn. Account 7. When I was young, I would get sleep paralysis. I remember one time I was lying in the living room by myself and started to fall asleep, and the sleep paralysis started. I couldn't move or open my eyes when I started hearing this weird buzzing noise, and then a really creepy voice started saying my name. I kept saying it slightly louder each time as if it was getting closer. I finally snapped out of it. It was really freaky, messed me up for a few days as a kid. Account 8. In middle school, class was letting out and my best friend and I were walking to our buses. He had to stop by the music room to pick up his instrument to take home, so I told him, goodbye. I kept walking, turned around the corner, and he popped out of another door with his instrument and startled me on purpose. We walked and talked for another minute, and as I was walking away from him to get on my bus, I told him, goodbye for good this time. That weekend, he was killed in a car crash in front of his house. He was ejected, and his family's car rolled over him. Now I relive that last interaction I had with him every once in a while. Definitely creepy. Out nine. I nearly forgot this story. Short but creepy. I was about 16 years old and was heading back to central Indiana from King's Island Dot Theme Park in Cincinnati. 
Somewhere along the highway, we saw a man walk out of the woods about a quarter mile up. As we get closer, I noticed it is a middle-aged man completely naked, other than a latex mask. Think BDSM and a chain around his neck. There was nobody else visible from the road. Being that I was 16, I just looked at the strange naked man and kept driving. Thinking back, I always wished I had called the police. Who knows what he was doing in the woods along the highway? Account 10. I was standing in front of my house with my dad on a spring day when I was seven. We were looking across the street at the neighbor's house, making casual conversation to pass the time. Suddenly, we see about three crows start to circle around the house. Then, one of the crows dives into our neighbor's yard and starts to pull apart their storm drain, the water spout that catches roof water and sends it to the ground. It appeared that a family of finches had built a nest in the drain, and the crows wanted to eat the eggs. They succeeded, but that was not all. The crows then caught one of the finches, ripped its head off, and started to eat it. The other finch darted off in fright, abandoning its home. About three minutes later, I shit you not, the finch returns with about 50 other finches, and they start to attack the crows. The crows took down a couple more of the finches, but they were covered in a massive swarm of angry feathers. Two of the crows were ripped to shreds within minutes, and the other one got away but fell to the ground after making it to a nearby hill, probably due to a damaged wing. It was very scary for my young mind, and I had just seen the horror movie, The Birds. After everything was done, my dad turns to me and says, What the fuck? That was the first time I heard him swear. Account 11. Buried, but it's worth a try. Didn't happen to me. But someone I know. Friend in her second year of college away from home, living in a one-bedroom apartment by herself, living alone, she was always super conscious of locking her doors and everything, comes back from class one day and notices that her stuff was not how it was when she left. Clothes on the floor, papers rustled, etc., and there was a picture on her floor of a little black boy whom she had never seen before. Enough was out of place that she was way weirded out and she called the police. Police come to investigate, can't find any evidence of breaking and entering, and they ask if they can take her computer. They take it. She's freaked, but she tries not to worry about it. Next day, police show up, bring her the computer, and tell her that they found something on it. They open her Microsoft Word and find 100s of letters to her. Weird-ass love letters talking about her. Every single one ended the same way. If you don't believe me, just look under your bed. No joke. They look under her bed. Lift up her mattress to find 100s of used condoms. Needless to say, she noped right out of there and moved back home the next day. Never found out who it was, assumed it was someone working maintenance considering doors were always locked and she came home to them locked when the incident occurred. Account 12. My parents were out one night and my brother and I were home alone. We were probably 12 and 10, respectively, anyway. There's a knock at the door and I hear a voice say, Pizza, initially thinking it was my father playing a joke. I instinctively went to open the door when it hit me. That wasn't my dad's voice. We didn't order any pizza, I said. There was no reply and no audible movement. I went to my bathroom window, which allows some vision of the footpath leading from the front of our property to the front door. But you can't see the door itself, so we waited for about 15 minutes clutching a cricket bat and some ornamental fireplace poker until finally the dude moves away from the door and walks away. Just some guy with dark hair and a long ponytail, a long dark coat, and no pizza. Account 13. Creepiest. When I was in high school, these four girls went to a concert in a city that was a five-hour drive away. They tried to get a hotel room after, but they were too young and were denied, so they had to drive all the way home, about 20 mins. From making it home, the driver fell asleep at the wheel, and the car rolled. One of the girls was killed. A couple days later, the girl's parents invited a bunch of us over to their house, where we were shocked to see they had her body laying in her bed.